Welcome to Straight to the Point, what is a cause and effect diagram? A cause and effect diagram, sometimes also called an Ishikawa or a fishbone because of the way it looks, is a tool that helps illustrate root causes for a given problem. What we'll be looking at is first identifying our effect and then later identifying the causes that lead to that effect. So assuming that you're creating a fishbone, you would take the head of the fish and that would be your effect. This would be the problem that you're identifying. And then the spines to your fish would explore the causes that created that problem. We would approach it using a 5Y technique or ask why, which is from Lean Six Sigma. And ultimately this will dig further into identifying what the root cause is. We're gonna be taking a look at a very quick example for a fast food hamburger restaurant. And the problem that we're having is there's too many returns. Let's take a look at what this looks like in our cause and effect diagram. For today, I actually did put the fish illustration around our actual cause and effect diagram to give it more of that fun look. I have seen people also create very artistic ones, so depending on how creative you are, you may very well make this look into a work of art. Looking at the far right, we can see the head is labeled Hamburger Returned, and this identifies for us the effect that we want to investigate. Now let's take a look at some of the causes. We can see that we have three causes. Starting in the top left, we can see that there's hair and food, wrong condiments, and then the food is too cold. Let's get started with our hair and food category, and then let's use our ask why technique to get further into identifying what the root cause is. We can see the reason why there's maybe hair and food is because there are no hair nets available. And maybe there's no hair nets available because they cost too much. Looking at our wrong condiments cause, we can see that there are two primary causes for here. Maybe the reason why we're putting the wrong condiments on the hamburger is because we can't read the screen. Well, why can't we read the screen? Well, that's because the text on the screen is too small. Looking at our other cause under wrong condiments is the ketchup is in the mayo bottle. Well, why would we have ketchup in the mayo bottle? Perhaps somebody had filled it in the wrong bottle. And looking at our last cause, which is the food is too cold, we can see that there are two reasons we've asked why. Maybe the food is too cold because we were waiting for fries. Well, why were we waiting for fries? Why was that hamburger sitting on the side? Perhaps there's just not enough fryers available. And the last item is that the heating lamp isn't warm. Well, why wouldn't our heating lamp be warm? Perhaps somebody shut it off. In a nutshell, that's how you use a cause and effect diagram. Of course, when you are using it for problem solving, you're also going to want to dig in further and see what you can do to remedy these actual causes. And of course, if you're artistic, don't be afraid to add in some color and draw some fish eyes and maybe a little bit of scales. And we're done. That concludes the session. Hope this was helpful. If you have any questions or feedback, please feel free to leave them in the comments. If you like what you saw, please click like. Also, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks so much.